Hello hey guys, what is going on? Gail right here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Nanmachi Memoria Freeze video. And today we're going to be talking about all the latest information dropped in the Danmachi Memoria Freeze live stream. And there was a lot. I was kind of expecting there to be a new event, but I wasn't expecting it to be this. So it's going to be changing a lot of the content that I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days. I was expecting it to be a, a time limited event, but it isn't. So without further ado, let's talk about what's coming up to the Danmachi game. Now, Yes, they are adapting the Volume 9 light novel for Sura Rotoria, which I wasn't expecting, I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting a, frankly speaking, I was expecting a Halloween event or a time limited event. I thought they were gonna just go straight in with another time limited event, you know. N we just had an event that was not time limited with the summer event, right? Uh, or the mech event i should say it's not even really a summer event it was just a mech event more so than anything else and i thought you know what it's time you know halloween is next month it's perfect timing but i guess with there being a three week gap right this this celebration slash tail will go on for effectively three weeks and then at the end of the third week which should be around about the 20th of october give or take in and around then we might get the Halloween event. So it makes sense. I suppose I maybe messed up with the timings and stuff. So probably why we went so off in terms of like the expectations. But like I said, there are adapting Sword Oratoria Volume 9. There are only four new units in the celebration. A Reveria, Subaki, Eyes, and Finn. And I am very curious about the banner setup. Now, remember, I'm coming into this uh, sort of news session without seeing anything to be quite honest because i was away i was at university um i had some lectures while the live stream was going on and as a result i missed it so i'm completely going into this blind with no idea about what the units do or what the banners are or anything of that sort so effectively this uh tale is like i said is going to be a adaptation of sword oratoria volume 9 it is going to be fully voiced as well and on top of that at the end of clearing very hard you will get a guaranteed four star 11 draw ticket that will feature all the new unit they will it will be focused on those four only you can get one of the four it's not going to be just a normal guaranteed 11 draw or a normal guaranteed four star 11 draw that will give you anything it'll give you one of these four units which is great i think that's really cool very very happy that that this is a thing now they have like i said there's four new units there's an eyes uh a young eyes it seems like it yeah it's a younger eyes for sure they're gonna be adapting a past eyes they have a reveria an, uh, a reveria as well we have finn and then we have a subaki which is very interesting now from the looks of things it's gonna be looking like eyes and reveria are gonna be wind Finn might be an assist, I think. He looks like he's going to be an assist. And then Subaki looks like she's going to be fire because of the fire uh, at the bottom right. She's got red around her. Could be Earth as well. I'm I'm leaning towards fire just because also the text is red in all honesty. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of basing it off that as well. All right. So, okay. So Subaki and Eyes are on the same banner. Interesting. So it's a 14710 as per usual. It's a two unit banner as well. So it's better in that regard. Still would say probably save up even though... I don't know what they do yet. I would probably say still save up. And then we have Reveria and Finn on the other side, which is cool. Uh, all right. We'll talk about the, what the units do right now, actually. I think that'll be best because I know a lot of people are interested in seeing my reactions to what the units do and stuff. So let's get the units out of the way. So I'm going to pull up Eyes first. Eyes is right there. So let's go over to Eyes and put her on the screen, even though you guys probably can't see her because I've covered half the page. But what Eyes does is basically she gives foes ultra wind magic attack with temporary match boost and mres minus 50 percent and aoe and st damage taken plus 50 percent for three turns and self add, uh, add four additional actions foes mid wind attack uh magic attack that is and shorten status buffs by three turns and extend status debuffs by three turns really strong special arts i think that's going to be really good because you're getting the mres reduction and then on top of that you're getting an aoe and sd damage taken plus 50 percent for three turns which means she's going to be really useful in both situations again kind of like the whole thing with you know running lazar fiana finn for a light team in both you know war games and record buster and just all types of contents 
this unit, this eyes can very much do something along those lines as well. You know, she also has the whole shorten status buffs by three turns and extend status debuffs by three turns on the enemy, which is really, really handy, right? Um, especially if you're doing, say, if you're able to get her uh, special arts off in war games or in just general content as well, especially if you're facing up difficult enemies. So I think that's really cool. Her S1 is 105 MP, full slow high wind magic attack, so it's a slow, she'll probably go last, uh, probably, I mean most likely will go last, with ultra and counter rate and temporary magic boost, and self-remove status debuffs, which is great, that's really good, because then you can remove any agility debuffs and stuff like that, and uh, adds uh, three additional actions uh, of uh, foe's wind, mid wind magic attack, and shorten status buffs by two turns, and extend status debuff by two turns, so it's a very similar skill to the SA, except you don't get the MRES down and the AOE and ST damage taken boost basically there. Her S2 is a self fast heal rate plus 60% and 60% HP regen for one turn and self magic and agility 60% and wind attack damage for 100% for five turns. That's really strong. Very strong I would say. Obviously it's only on self so it's not unbelievably OP where it's like oh all allies get this but it's still a solid buff right? Her S2 is a fast heal rate plus, oh uh, sorry, not S2, I should talk about the S3. Her S3 is 50 uh, uh, MP and it's a single target foe super win magic attack with ultra critical rate skill damage plus 60% per self agility buff. Okay, that's kind of cool. I think that's pretty easy. And I think that's actually going to be really, really solid, especially if you are going into something like Record Buster, because you're going to get those AGI buffs going through some assi one assist or the other, pretty much, to be quite honest. And you'll get that 120% per self AGI buff, well, 120% AGI buff boost, basically, to the damage, effectively. Her passives are 45% Earth Res and Counters and RA are Wind Magic Attack, of course. 35% is uh, Magic Agility Dexterity, 20 uh, 20% damage on crit and penetration, 5% HP and MP regen, which is great, and then she gets Dragon Killer. Interesting. Okay, Dragon Killer on her. Okay, let's look at Riveria now. Let's uh, let's move on to Riveria now. So for Riveria, she is a single target unit. Okay, so uh, her special arts is a single target ultra wind magic attack with ultra on god rate skill damage 100% per foe wind resist debuff. You know, I was talking about Dix yesterday. Um on uh, video you know i was talking about him you know how he's getting 120 i think it is per some buff he gets right here it's 100 percent, so you're losing 40 percent in comparison to dicks but what she gives your allies is p res and m res 50 and sa gate charge for 44 percent for three turns which is really strong i think that's really good that's really really good her single target or s1 is a single target 42 mp fast low wind magic attack so okay low interesting with ultra penetration rate and ST damage taken plus 30% and wind resist minus 40% for 4 turns. And she adds 4 additional actions of a mid wind magic attack. Interesting. I'm surprised that they've given her a low attack there. I think that, that should have been at least mid in my opinion. But it is what it is. S2 is 45 MP, self fast magic attack, uh, magic 100% for 4 turns, and allies wind attack damage 60% for 4 turns, and allies 30% HP regen for 4 turns really nice actually i would say that's not bad at all uh, of course you don't get the allies magic uh, magic boost as well there unfortunately i don't know if i would have preferred the 100 straight up or 60 across the board for everybody so 60 percent magic to all allies as well as the wind attack damage right but i think this is still really solid I'm gonna be getting some good damage out of her where especially once you start using the s3 which is 47 mp single target super wind magic attack with high critical rate and temporary great magic boost and removes p res and m res buffs she has the same uh, set of abilities as the eyes, except instead of the MP and HP regen, she gets 65% counter damage, which is really good. She also has dragon killer like eyes. I think this is not a bad unit. I feel like they've undertuned her a little bit, in all honesty, just a teeny tiny bit. But I think that's not bad at all still. I think that's going to be a really strong unit nonetheless. And I'm very excited to see how she actually performs in game for sure. I'm probably not going to summon for her. So far, I'm not the biggest fan of it all. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the biggest fan so far. I would probably say skip for a lot of players. Um, Subaki. 
So her special arts uh, is, let me go over to, to Subaki here, there we go. Um, her special arts is a foe's ultra fire physical attack, so she, I was right, she is physical fire. Um, ultra critical rate skill damage plus 80% per self STR buff, okay, that's really strong. And allies remove status debuffs and 40% HP regen for 4 turns, that's really strong, that's a strong special arts. Her S1 is 125 MP, okay. Um, foes, fast, STR, magic, dexterity, penetration rate, physical resistance, minus 40% for one turn. And self, STR, 70% for four turns. And foes remove water, thunder, earth, wind, light, dark damage buffs. And self, additional four actions of mid, fire, physical attack with ultra critical rate. Now, the reason why I'm looking down is I'm actually opening up the game because that S1 is kind of like Otaro's, if I'm not mistaken, which is really good, especially because of the buffs that the fire team has been getting. You know, this is really strong. This is very, very strong. And when I say the buffs the fire team has been getting, have you not seen the Ryu that just dropped? Like, I think there's going to be some big buffs for the fire team really soon. So really strong very very good on that one i'm just double checking if that is the actual skill one uh that otaro has as well her s2 is 68 mp foes super fire physical attack with ultra critical rate skill damage plus 40 percent per self str buff and self dexterity fire attack damage bonus plus 70 percent for four turns so you want to use your s1 then go into your s2 and go from there because you're getting that 80 percent per self str buff damn that's a really strong boost honestly that is going to be really good her s3 is 46 mp foe high fire physical attack with ultra critical rate skill damage plus 80 percent per self str buff really good again very very strong um very similar uh abilities as the above two in terms of her passives when res 35% to STR Endurance, Agility, Dexterity. She gets 8% HP MP regen per turn, which makes sense with the S1 being so much in terms of MP consumption. 20% MRES and PRES, and then Dragon Killer as well. So, gonna be focusing on a lot of Dragon Killer, and I wouldn't be surprised that if we were to get a Familiar Rush or something like that, I would expect that Dragon Killer is going to be very, very vital. Now, let me just check the Otaro really quickly, and let me see what the situation is, because I really want to compare and contrast the skills. Because I think it's kind of similar. Okay, so it is somewhat similar. Um, the only thing is that her S1, uh, whereas Otaro's uh, first skill, uh, you know, removes everything and does a Super Thunder physical attack, it doesn't necessarily do anything in terms of, you know, reducing the SGR magic, dexterity, penetration rate, and physical resistances and giving herself SGR 70%. It's that, uh, Otaro's is a pure attack, whereas uh, Tsubaki's is a buff slash debuff kind of thing, right? Um, obviously, Otaro does have the whole thing of he gets the penetration rate and P res minus 40% and all the buffs on his self on Peel of Thunder as his second skill. So what they've done is they've basically combined Otaro's two skills into S1 for a Tsubaki, which is really insane. And then given the damage on the second skill, basically. So you want to use her S1, then go into her S2, which is going to do a lot of damage. It's going to do ridiculous amounts of damage. So very fair, very fair, I suppose. I, I guess that is uh, uh, that is how it is. All right, so we now have the fin. If we scroll down on Discord, which by the way, you can join my Discord as well if you want. Um, this is thanks to Valiris, I should specify. Thank you so much to Valiris for providing the information and doing the translations. But we have Finn right here who does Wind Res and Fire Res minus 25%. I'm just, it's, they're literally just doing the, they're literally just buffing Fire and Fire now. Wind is getting buffs already, right? Wind is getting buffs. We've literally gotten a couple of units with Wind. You know, we had Melia and now we've had these two, right? Um, the Eyes and Reverium, more so the Eyes, of course, if you're going for an AoE team. But Finn basically adds on to the Ryu, which did 25% Fire Attack Damage Bonus. And, minus 25% physical resistance. It, it's helping the Tsubaki, literally. So you're gonna be able to run a full team. Now, again, I'm not the biggest fan of these very basic, uh, you know, assist skills nowadays that they're doing, uh, the last couple of assists that they've been doing, because a lot of the assists that we've had so far, if you look at the ALF, you look at the Ryulu and stuff like that, they're insanely good in terms of what they do and what they provide in terms of counter skills and stuff like that. So to me, I think this is a little bit of an L as well. Again, the Tsubaki looks to be absolutely cracked, right? But the other units, even the Finn, would I run the Finn on my team as an assist option? You know, when you're trying to 
get a lot of stuff done at the same time you want to try and get some nullifications going you want to try and get some uh counters going and stuff like that would i add finn i don't know i actually i actually don't know in all honesty so a little bit of a confusion right there in all honesty but it is what it is now let's look at the other pieces of news that have uh, that has dropped in the uh in this up, uh, update basically so i'm gonna close that for now and let's see what's uh what's been cooking otherwise but in terms of the banners I mean, like I said, the Subaki is probably the only one that I'm really going to be like, yeah, you need to try and potentially go for her. But the other units on the banner and stuff, I would probably say just skip, to be quite honest. These are non-time limited units as well. They're all Sword of Rotoria, you know, long tail units aren't time limited. So in all honesty, you could just skip this. Honestly, you could very well skip this. Anime latest info. Okay, so we've got a new bell. All right, I guess I have to pull up the new bell then. Because uh, I did see it. I did see it out of the corner of my eye. I didn't notice that there was a translation for a bell. But I didn't know what it was. But I guess it is the new anime unit. And it is another fire physical unit. Fantastic. So basically, what we're ge getting to is basically just use fire. <laughs> uh, his special arts is a single target ultra fire physical attack. With ultra and guard rate skill damage. But 100% per self st buff and remove status buffs on the foe which is good okay that's not bad it's not the greatest but it's okay s1 is 74 mp foe fast mid fire physical attack with high on guard rate and physical resistance minus 40 percent for four turns and self str and fire attack damage 70 percent for four turns adds four additional actions of a full mid fire physical attack with high on guard rate and allies 10 percent mp heal not bad especially because the mp heal will just be consistent that'll be good his S2 is 71 MP, super fire physical attack with ultra and god rate, skill damage plus 70% per self SGR buff, and allies dexterity and counter rate plus 40% for 4 turns. That's really nice. I, I That's actually really fantastic in all honesty. And his S3 is 133 MP, allies fast 30% heal, and 1 times physical null, extends status buff by 3 turns. That third skill, I mean, it's not that great in all honesty. I, it, it was so good. S1, S2 were so good and then S3 was just like, eh. I'm not the biggest fan of S3. I think that's kind of eh in all honesty. We'll have to just wait and see where it's going to be utilized. Uh, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Fast growth, null charm, wind resist plus 45% and counters and slash RA or fire physical. 30% to all status, 25% damage on crit and penetration while wielding knife. Okay. And giant killer. Okay not bad at all it's not the greatest but it'll do i think it'll do donkey i think i think the unit itself is pretty darn strong i think the unit itself is going to be very powerful with its s1 and s2 but i feel like there was a missed opportunity with that s3 that s3 could have been way stronger now i'm gonna also look at the october Mem memoria right now that we have fire attack damage and thunder attack damage plus six percent from turn six to ten very much what they're doing nowadays with the memoria is doing the later turns they've done everything from one turns one to seven basically now they're going for turns six to ten basically so that's cool i think that's dope all right so again the argo rabbit bell is going to be free first time multi and then second fourth seventh and ten draws are going to be guaranteed which is cool final trial calamity high difficulty battle content available take down the undefeatable juggernaut Okay, kind of spoilery because, of course, this is part of the episode, it seemed, uh, but, but, but I I couldn't help it. I Listen, it was part of the news live stream. I can't help this, but okay. Um, so I guess we're going to be facing him. Juggernaut ar arrives in final trial, get a special feat from the ranking rewards. And I guess this is where the bell is going to be shining brightest. You're going to be getting Hero Light and Ascension Fulna. I think I'm going to reiterate that, uh, yeah, I would probably say don't take the risk of uh, or the stress i should say of not being able to do it i'll probably do a video on my attempt of it and see how far i can get but yeah i would say don't stress too much if you can't really get a massive score but uh, but effectively for the first time you cleared you get three two star tickets three three star tickets on hard one eleven draw three star guaranteed on very hard and a four star guaranteed ticket on extra difficulty and then if you go up to 20 million you get a bunch of cp items along with what is a hundred iris so you want to target 20 million but again i assume that'll only happen if you do extra so okay so you get ranking rewards as well okay so if you're in the top 300 for the eu you will get up to 250 to 400 iris and there seems to be more ranking rewards beyond 301 so it'll be probably 200 iris 150 iris and stuff like that 
Interesting. The US is top 600. Okay, so top 600. I think I could probably get into the top 600 as long as you don't require, absolutely require the bell, which I'm expecting it will be the case. And then on top of that, you will probably need the new fin. You will probably need the new Ryu. It's going to be very tricky, but we'll see how it goes. I'm very curious to see how the fire team can do um, the old fire team that is. But there you guys go. Okay, so we also have the Astraea record login bonus. So this is in celebration of the Astraea record becoming a light novel. We are getting a guaranteed four star ticket at the end of it. Um, yes, Astraea record, the rise of evil, JP publication campaign per confirmed. I assume we will inevitably get a global version or a translated version of the light novel inevitably. We're going to be celebrating this uh, mini campaign login bonus thing anyways on our server anyways as well so don't worry about that done we will schedule 9 29 so we've got on the 29th which is tomorrow well not tomorrow thursday morning we have the subaki the not subaki but the recollections of the wind event so the sword oratorial volume 9 light novel adaptation we have the two banners coming out we have the bundles as per usual we have gareth record buster okay oh uh, gareth's coming back i thought it was gonna be finn low-key but okay gareth is gonna be coming back we'll try our best it's probably gonna be dominated by wind units in all honesty which is not gonna be fun i don't have the wind units for this but we'll see seven zones gonna be coming back we'll do videos on that of course anime gotcha final trial and then on the 30th we have the login bonus on the first we have the new memoria of course which as we said is going to be fire and thunder damage undertale skira is going to be coming back on the first as well on the sixth we have the familiar war games okay so no worries about the dragon killer thing at all or anything of that sort we're just going to go into familiar war games okay 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 war games training seventh zone and there we guys go all right pretty darn cool uh overall very excited to see how these units fare um it does seem like we're going to be shifting towards a fire meta very soon i feel like that's going to be the case i think we've got some decent units in the celebration i wouldn't say they're game breaking or revolutionary number uh, in all honesty uh, i would say probably just to save up hold off your iris and then see what's going to be coming out in the weeks to come you guys can hold off on that in all honesty you can you can hold off on summoning on this banner but there you guys go thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it leave a like let me know if you're planning on summoning on the banners um let me know if you want to summon for a certain units are you going for the team wise the element you know maybe you've got a great wind team going or you want to go for a fire team or something like that let me know in the comment section down below it's been gail ride hopefully you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time bye bye everybody